Okay, so one thing that's important to note here when you're dealing with these kind of sources, which come from a vector layer, is that um, you can't use this set data. You can't actually change the data that's on the map here. Now you could use the data from the map to like create other layers, right? Because we have the GeoJSONs, uh, like we have the feature and the geometry, which has its array right in there. Okay, so we could use this information, do whatever the heck we want with it, make new features, make new features on the map, or loop over things, or do analysis, right? Like if a person clicks, I could find out then, okay, that click was a certain latitude, longitude, and this thing was rendered under it, and there's some whatever. You do some cool stuff with the fact that they clicked on that thing. Or if you have a whole bunch of points here, you could loop over this and find out which ones are inside which parks. That's pretty cool. So using that, having that data available um, lets you do all kinds of things. But when it comes to setting the data and changing this data, we can't do it on these particular types of features because they don't come from a GeoJSON source. So when it comes to um, modifying data, we have this uh, GeoJSON source. So that's a source specifically with GeoJSON, right? And for those, we have the set data function that's available. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. You can see here they're adding a source, right? And it is actually a GeoJSON file. Let's go look at that. Okay, so it's uh, fairly, not, not too large, but it's a GeoJSON file there. We, uh, I guess, some places around the world. Okay, and we add that. And then you can change the data after, right? Here we have with the null island. Okay, so why don't we just load, so why don't we just go grab some, um, so we need to get rid of that. And let's just go grab some GeoJSON data. Uh, let's go to GeoJSON.io, go find Paris and make some data. Okay. Where are we? More Lyon and Paris. There we go. Okay. And we have this data. Okay, so there's a feature collection. Let's grab it and let's add our source. And this time we're going to say it's GeoJSON and we're going to give it its data. So how do we give that again? Let's look at our example, uh, data feature collection. Okay, so we just pass data and we just give it all of this. Okay, there we go. And we'll add the layer, which is, in this case, the source layer is going to be, oh, we're going to remove that. We're going to call it um, custom poly. And add that as the source. And it doesn't really matter what we call it. Oh, no, we want to, we want a fill layer. And we'll make that fill color. Let's try that out. So, okay, there's our polygon. It's uh, pink. That's that's pretty awesome. Okay, so now if I want to change this, uh, we can do that. So instead of it being, let's have a, when we click, we're going to change this source. So we can go map dot get source. Oops. And since it's GeoJSON, but only because it's a GeoJSON one, we can do this set data. Okay, and that allows us to change the data uh, to whatever we want it to be. So here we go with the feature collection. Did I grab it the right place? I think that's right. Okay, so here's, we just pass the GeoJSON right in there. And let's just change it a little. So let's make it, let's get rid of some of the points in between. Now if we click, we have changed the geometry. So I just removed a bunch of them, remember? And now if we click again, nothing more happens. Okay, let's reload that again. And there we go. So you can imagine that you can use that to do much more interesting things than I just did. You could use it to, uh, you know, set the data every half a second and change um, the, in the information being shown. You could do some kind of animation style work with that. So let's just do a quick example of that with this kind of information. Let's just add a little bit to a point as we, um, or let's add a bit to each coordinate as we, uh, after we click. So we're going to do a set interval function, and we'll set the thing to 100 milliseconds so it's pretty fast. We'll have this get source inside there. 
Okay. And now we need it to change every time, so why don't we add a var count, zero, and every time it adds 0 0.0001. Okay, so it's not a lot, but it's something. So now what we're going to do every time is we're just going to add those numbers to... So this is basically just randomizing a little bit. It's not really random, but just just trying something out to see if we can have this move and change once we start clicking on it. Oh, no, it's not really happening here. Ah, yeah, you can see that it's movement is going on. So that's kind of interesting. Um, let's make this a little more noticeable. We have to chase it around a little bit. So there it goes. It's taken off. It's faster than us. So that's kind of fun. We can do all kinds. <laughs> it's kind of funny. We can do all kinds of stuff with that. We can make all kinds of animated, interesting maps, uh, even games and and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to show you, and that should should give you a sense of some of the ways you can use data. If you're already into maps, you know that you can make filters and those kind of things. I have a separate course available where I do that in Leaflet, and a lot of that would be also applicable here. Um, if you're going to use that data, make sure you always bear in mind the rendered issue. So if you need more help, you know where to find me, and I hope this course has proved useful to you. Uh, it's been useful for me just to go through and do all this stuff with you guys. So we'll see you next time around.